So the home buying process can be very intimidating, especially if you're a first time home buyer. And so what I want to do in today's video is go through the process, look at the steps and hopefully reveal that they're really very simple and very intuitive and hopefully take some of the edge off so that the home buying process doesn't seem so overwhelming to you. Also, hopefully this will demonstrate some of the value in having a competent, good realtor at your side to navigate with you through the process of buying your home. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina with ERA Leatherman and I am here today to walk you through said process so that you can be confident going into your next home buying experience or home selling experience for that matter because a lot of these concepts are good to know no matter what side of the transaction you're on. Now before we get in, let's set the groundwork on a couple of things because it's important for me to make this disclaimer. This is not a cookie cutter subject because there's actually quite a few variables that you could substitute into the formula of the home buying process. For example, there's differences in the process if you're a cash buyer as opposed to if you are obtaining financing and you're going to have a mortgage to a lender. So we're going to just make some assumptions and I'm going to lay those out in the beginning and then we'll go through the process because I think that this outline would apply to the majority of home buyers that would watch this video particularly in our area. Let's assume that you are going to be obtaining traditional financing, that you're going to be getting a loan, uh, seeking a loan from a lender. And we've already started a playlist on this subject that you can see over here. You can click on that playlist after this video is over. I'll put the playlist down in the description. We've just started, but we have plans to continue to nurture and develop that out so that you can learn all things related to financing to the lending industry in terms of your home transaction. So for today's video, let's assume that the buyer is going to be obtaining a loan and let's also assume that they're going to want to go through the full list of contingencies that you could have on a contract when purchasing a home. This is going to allow us to look at every nook and cranny of the process at a high level. And then the plan will be, God willing, down the future, we're going to drill down into some of these specifics on your real estate contract. Let's go ahead and start. And you're looking for a home and you're probably on Zillow or Realtor.com or Trulia, one of those three, and you're shopping homes with your spouse. You're looking at all the homes, you're looking at the pictures, you're looking at the prices and the locations, and you're discussing the options and you're looking for the ones that jump out to you. And when you see one that you like and you know that you're committed to buy, you're ready to purchase a home, then you're probably gonna click on one of those buttons down on that advertisement down on that listing in the in one of those apps that says contact an agent that's going to be where the process is going to start or tends to start for many of you out there another option you have is that you could look up realtors in your area online you could google them you could go to facebook you could ask for recommendations and i would recommend calling a few different realtors and speaking with them so that you're basically interviewing because this is the person that you're going to work with through the rest of this process that we're about to go through. And you want to be sure that you're going to be receiving good communication, that you're going to have somebody that you connect with. You know, everybody's not a fit um, in a client professional relationship. This is important because the realtor is the one who is going to be searching houses for you. Your realtor has access to properties the moment they hit the market. And so sometimes just relying on Zillow or Realtor.com is not really the best option. Your realtor has access to the MLS and can see houses the moment that they, that they hit the market. They have inside information sometimes of houses that have not hit the market yet that might fit exactly what you're looking for. So your realtor has that peek behind the curtain that you don't have access to. And this, this really helps bolster your options in terms of the homes you're looking for. Plus quality homes at the right price oftentimes are not going to be around long. So it's, it's a very interesting, I say it this way, it's a very interesting dynamic between being patient and not feeling rushed because we're making such a large purchase and a life investment while equally understanding that this is a fast paced market. Quality homes at the right price go up and come down very quickly in terms of being available. And so we want to be patient in finding the right property. But once we found that right property, we need to move aggressively through this process that we're about to look at, specifically the part of getting an offer in on that home. But you need a realtor in the beginning to get into the house to take a look at it for the most part. So we'll see as we go through this video, you're going to want to have a business relationship with a licensed real estate agent. And at the beginning of that relationship, they're going to give you a couple of documents. One's a disclosure. The other is an agency agreement. 
We'll look at the specifics of those documents so you understand what they are in other videos, but just know that they're gonna present you with two documents in particular. One's a disclosure, it's not a contract. They're gonna give you that probably on your initial conversation and you'll need to sign it. That's something that us licensed realtors have to do. And it's just a disclosure explaining the different types of agency that exist in our state. Then if you decide to move forward into a relationship with them, they're going to send you a contract and those can be customized and tailor-made. And so we'll go over that in a different video. And so now you have a relationship with a licensed realtor and now you are house shopping. Okay, this is what we all wanted to get to. So now we're house shopping. You have your pre-approval letter. You know what your buying power is. You know what your range to spend is. You've either already determined or you're dialing in the specifics of what you want to purchase. And now we're house shopping. And so your realtor is gonna be as you're giving them information, and guys, they need good information. They can't search for your perfect home if they don't know what it is. So the more detail that you can give a realtor about what you're looking for, they need that information so that they can refine their search in the homes they're gonna be sending you. And that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna start sending you homes probably almost daily, depending on the condition of the market and where you live, but they're going to be sending you homes that match your criteria as soon as they pop up on their MLS because most good agents are checking the MLS daily, uh, multiple times a day even. So they're gonna be sending you homes for you to look at and see if you have remotely any interest. When you find a home that you're interested in, so your realtor sends you a home, you and your wife look at it, say, you know, we really like this house you're gonna call them and say, we wanna get in there and take a look at this home. They will call the listing agent for that property or go online, however it's set up, and they'll set up a showing time and meet you there or take you there and you guys are gonna to tour the property and do a very surface level look at the house to see if it is in fact a home that you are interested in putting an offer in on. Now, the next step, you found the home that you like, you've toured it and you want to go to the next level with it, then you're gonna to say to your realtor, listen, I think we wanna put an offer in on this home. And so your realtor's gonna say, okay, let me go and look at the numbers, let me look at the details, and let's look at the price and make sure that we're in the right ballpark. Let's start to discuss the options of what your realtor is gonna suggest that that offer should look like. And this is where the importance of having a good realtor that you can trust comes into play because what you don't want is somebody that is just going to say, great, you wanna make an offer on a house, let's just offer them what they're asking without even looking into the home. Now on the flip side of that coin, to be fair, a good realtor on the seller side of the transaction is going to have the home priced accurately. And of course they're representing their seller, they wanna to get top dollar for the home, but it's not gonna be egregiously overpriced. But yet and still, your realtor needs to go and look into the details of the home they can call and see if they can get some more explanation on things that are on the property disclosure. They're going to look at the property disclosure. They're gonna basically go to the next level of investigation of this house that you've now expressed serious interest in to find out what's going on with it and what we need to know as we begin to tailor uh, an offer and kind of considering anything that may need to be negotiated in terms of that offer, that kind of thing. So your realtor is gonna to begin to put together suggestions to you, the buyer, of what your offer initially should look like. And he's gonna, or she is going to present you with the data of how they came to that conclusion. And so that's what you're looking for in that part of the process, so that you can have an educated understanding of the offer that you're putting in and why you're putting it in. Make sure that you listen to your realtor. You've hired this person to represent you because you found something in them that gave you a level of trust and confidence in their capability to do the job and to perform what you're hiring them to do, which is to help you find the right home at the right price under the right circumstances that fit what you're looking for. Okay, so now we go through that process, we come to an agreement on an offer and we put an offer in on the home. And so what does that offer include? An offer is actually a contract to buy in South Carolina. So it's a real estate contract that you're gonna fill out and sign, you and your agent, and send it over to the listing agent for them and their sellers to look at. And if they agree on the terms, they will sign it and it's now a binding contract. So the offer 
is a written formal contract that's only waiting on a signature from the seller's side to become binding legally. And that's important to understand. And with that being said, I'm going to go through these things and I'm just going to hit each one of them. I'm not going to go into explanation of them in any real great detail for the sake of the length of this video. We will drill down on the contract and what the key points of that contract look like section by section on other videos at a later time. That's something that we'll move into next. But for now, I'm just going to go through the key points that you and your agent are going to be discussing in terms of building your offer based off everything that we just said. So the first thing is obvious is the price of the home. We're going to determine this is the price that we should offer and these are the reasons why. And that's that discussion that I said that y'all will have. Listen to the things your realtor is saying and how he or she came to that conclusion. Next is going to be the closing date. This is key and you know something that people don't think about frequently, but when are you going to be prepared to close in this home? This is key because this is the time where you're going to need to know that you're going to have your funds available to pay for all of your closing costs, everything that needs to be done. When you're going to be ready to move into the home is the sale contingent of the sale of some other property that you have, maybe the home you're living in. So there can be a variety of variables that can affect the date that you're going to be prepared to close on this home that you're purchasing. So we have to determine what the closing date is. We have to select a closing attorney. If you don't already have relationships with attorneys that can do real estate closings, then your realtor is going to make some recommendations for you. They probably have an attorney that they predominantly work with that they'll recommend, or maybe they'll give you a few. And you can, again, you know, take their recommendation you can go on Facebook and ask for recommendations, however you want to go about doing it, but you're going to need to put into that contract offer a closing attorney. You're going to need to determine what the earnest money amount is going to be. And so that earnest money deposit is basically a financial deposit that you'll make on the front end of the deal that is stating your full intent to purchase the home. And we'll do a whole video on earnest money when we get to that point. You also will put in there as part of your offer, a termination fee. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's a dollar amount that you're saying, hey, if I decide to walk away from this during the due diligence period, which we'll get to in a minute, we did a whole video on a couple weeks ago, then this is the amount that I will pay you for taking your home off the market and giving me the time to decide that I didn't want to buy it. So that number can be anything. And that will be in there. Your realtor will go through that with you in this process of building this offer. And also, I didn't mention when I said earnest money, you will determine who's going to be your escrow holder, who's going to hold the earnest money during the time of this transaction. It can be your realtor's brokerage firm or it can be the closing attorney. And I think a lot of times the preferable way to go is with the closing attorney because they're already handling all the financials and the check's already there. So it's just kind of a seamless way to go about doing it. You'll have to list in your offer what your financing is. And this is why having that conversation with a lender and getting all that in place is also critical because you can't put in your contract to buy the home without stating what type of financing you're going to be bringing to the table. And oftentimes a seller is going to want to see proof of funds before even signing off on your contract offer or moving forward into the process of selling you their home. And so that's a high level view of all of those things. Now, in another large category is contingencies. And this also is exactly what it sounds like. This is the section of your offer that states that I will purchase your home contingent upon this, this, and or this. Now, again, in today's video, we are assuming that you, the buyer, are obtaining financing. And so your loan underwriter to close your loan on the home, this is coming from your lender's side, is going to require certain inspections to be done because they have to qualify the property as a sound investment. And this is typically specifically going to be a wood inspection, meaning the framing of the house, but specifically the crawl space area, the foundation area of the home. And so they're going to have what is called a CL100 inspection ordered that's going to have to, going to, have to be ordered and done. Uh, and that's going to have to be clear of any damages for them to close your loan, okay? There's also other inspections that could be needed. If there's a well, if the home has a well, then the well may have to be inspected. Therefore, the contract itself has to be contingent upon those inspections or those contingencies because you can't close the loan and pay for the home without those things clearing. 
So those contingencies are going to have to be in that contract offer because your lender is going to require them. Now you can also have a due diligence period, which is essentially a contingency and where you can perform your own home inspections and determine on your own accord, not coming from the lender that you do or do not want to purchase the home. And that's where that termination fee comes in. If you decide to walk away based on that contingency, then you would pay them for taking their home off the market. But the CL100, the wood inspection, that stuff having to do with the foundation, your lender requires that. And so if you're obtaining a loan, they're going to require it nine times out of 10, and you're going to have that in the contract. And it's a contingency that has to be there. That's a real high level view. We'll drill down into those things um, here in the near future, God willing. But just know that the other part, the other big component, we've already listed the others, is the contingencies portion of your offer. Stating, I'm going to buy your home, just to review, at this price, I'm going to put this much in earnest money to show you that I'm earnest, that I'm serious, on this closing date with this closing attorney who will act as the escrow account holder for the earnest money deposit. And this is all contingent upon these various inspections or items or none, depending. But again, if you're getting a loan, there's going to be some you're almost certainly going to have to have. So that is what the offer looks like. And your realtor is going to walk you through all of that. So we come to terms and agreement on all of those points, all those items, and we have our offer put together and your agent's going to sign that. And then he or she's going to send it over to you so that you can sign it. And now we're going to send it over to the listing agent and your realtor is going to call the listing realtor and say, Hey, um, I've got an offer. Uh, I'm sending it over to you and it'll have a deadline on it on how long it's active. They will have whatever that time period is to look over your offer and decide if they're going to accept it or not. Now, for the sake of this video, let's just assume that they don't send a counter offer, which they can do that. But for the sake of this video, let's just say that they accept your offer. So you now have an accepted offer on a home. What happens next? Next, the process begins. And this is the place where a lot of buyers that aren't familiar with the process start to become really happy that they have a realtor and that they hired the right one because your realtor is going to order those inspections. If you did put a due diligence period on the home and you want to have a home inspection done, your realtor is going to put in the order for that to schedule that inspection. Same thing with the wood inspection that you need. Your realtor is going to schedule that inspection. And this is where you're going to appreciate having a good realtor because we're on a bit of a time clock here. And so these things need to be done efficiently and quickly. It's not the kind of thing that needs to stall out. And so, you know, I, once I have a signed contract, depending on what time of day it comes in, if it's in the evening, then first thing in the morning, I'm doing this. But if it's during the day, I'm doing it immediately. I already know what inspections I need. I'm talking to you, my client, and I'm going over with you the different options. We can hire, I work closely with this particular home inspector. He does a great job. He's thorough. Uh, this is what he charges, but here's some other options. And we're going to select the home inspector and the same thing with that CL100 wood inspection. These are our price points. These are the different pros and cons. You can go with this one. You can go with this one. And we decide who we're going to hire. And then I'm on the phone making those calls. We need to get these inspections ordered ASAP so that we can get them in there, get the invoices paid. I'll come to that in a moment and get the reports back so that we can go over them together and decide what we're going to do and what the next move is going to be because everything now is hinging on those inspections, specifically if they're contingencies. So again, assuming for the sake of this video, we did have all of the above contingencies, due diligence with a home inspection, uh, CL100, and the, you know, the whole nine from that standpoint, and then everything the lender is going to need that they're going to order. And so we're doing all these inspections. If it's on a well, then we're going to call and we're going to get the well water tested. And so for example, if it's like a VA loan, we're going to have to have the well water tested. We're ordering all these inspections because we need to get this done because the clock is ticking. We have a closing date that's coming up typically in about four weeks. Going back to the due diligence period, we have like two weeks to get these things done and decide what we're going to do if we're going to walk away or follow through with this transaction. So time is of the essence and you want a realtor that's effective, efficient, that's communicating well with you and that is getting these things scheduled and done. Honestly, 
a good agent's probably going to aggravate you a little bit as much as they're going to be contacting you. But once you understand everything that's going on, you're going to appreciate that. So that's what's happening now. We have an offer that's agreed upon, and now we've got to get these inspections ordered so that we can get these reports back. To get the reports back, you're going to need to pay the invoices. A ballpark a home inspection is typically going to be around $400 or so and a wood inspection anywhere from 75 to 200 dollars these invoices will need to be paid so that we can have the reports released that needs to be done timely also for all the same reasons that we just discussed and typically you can pay for these right over the phone with a card uh, if you're local you can go up to their office and pay you can pay in a variety of ways of course but the bottom line is it needs to be done because we need to get the reports in our hand so that we can go ahead and look at them and determine what is about to happen next, if anything. And now we're at the end because we're gonna assume that all of those inspections came back clean and clear. And again, we'll drill down on this in future videos, but just to touch it at a high level, assuming that they did not, say for example, the home inspection. Oh, well, man, there's a hole right here in this wall and there's a couple of outlets that aren't working. And so I want those things fixed before we go in then you'll talk to your realtor and say, you know what? Um, no, I'm paying them their asking price for this house. I want those things fixed and that's fair. So we'll make a repairs addendum, which is basically a request for them. It's a contractual request, much like our offer was for them to make these repairs. We will itemize each thing on there that we want repaired and we will send it over to them and they will either sign it and say they'll make the repairs by closing or they won't, or they'll counter and renegotiate. So all of this stuff is negotiable. So if the inspections come back and they're not clean, there's options. Same thing with the inspections that the lenders are requiring. It doesn't mean the transaction falls apart if there's issues. It simply means these are the issues that we need to have cleared up so that we can actually close this property. And so we have to go back into negotiation and conversations. And so again, this is why you're going to want to make sure that you have a realtor that's communicating well with you, that you feel that you can communicate well with, and that's going to be able to have these conversations with the agent that's on the other side of the table and get these things ironed out and negotiated so that we can make it to closing. Because at the end of the day, all four parties involved, the seller and their agent, the buyer, you and your agent all want to close the deal. That's what we all want. And so with that understanding, we're coming to the table to try to find out how we can maneuver the various obstacles that may present themselves to make it to the closing table and everybody walks away happy. That's the goal of every transaction in real estate ultimately, or it should be. But for the sake of this video, let's assume that we have clear reports. What else is there to do? Specifically in regards to the property, there's nothing really left to do. We're waiting for closing. Now, there's something I didn't mention, but during this process, which you know be ongoing over the course of days, you're gonna be sent a lot of documents to sign. Typically at this point in time, they're gonna be DocuSign type documents. You can do it right there on your phone through your emails, pretty convenient, relatively easy, but there's a variety of documents. So depending on the year that a house was built, there may be a lead-based paint disclosure that you have to sign. Your realtor is going to go over that with you. What is lead-based paint? What are the implications? What's on this disclosure? What is this pamphlet? Like they're, They'll talk through all that with you. There's going to be a variety of documents that you're going to have to sign. There's earnest money disclosure. There's wire fraud warning. The listing agent may have certain documents that their company requires to be signed that they may send over. The closing attorney is quite possibly going to be sending documents that are going to need to be signed by you. So there's going to be a bunch of signing going on. And again, having a realtor that will communicate well with you, they're going to be there to walk you through every step of that and explain to you what you're signing and why. So don't be alarmed. There is going to be a lot of signing. And that's one of the things that can tend to overwhelm people. But once you understand what each one of those documents are and why they're in place, like I said at the beginning of this video, they're all really very intuitive and they're, they're not as overwhelming once you understand what they are and why they're there. As we get closer to closing and your loan has made its way through underwriting, we're going to get a much clearer picture of what your financials are going to look like once we get to the closing table. Your realtor should be sent a settlement sheet that they can go over with you and they're going to be able to tell you 
what funds you need to be prepared to bring to closing. They're going to be able to go through with you exactly what the breakdown looks like in terms of the seller side and the buyer side in terms of all of the financials regarding the purchase of this property. They'll walk through all of that with you so that A, you understand everything that's going on, where all the money's moving, why it's moving there, but also you will understand specifically what you're gonna need to bring to closing down to the penny so that there's no hiccups on closing day in terms of the transaction. Now your lender will be going over a lot of this with you also, so you're gonna have multiple opportunities to have a great understanding of what you're doing financially and why you're doing it. And so a couple of other little notes that could be helpful to know. You are fully entitled to do a final walkthrough of the property before closing. So we've had all of our inspections done. We've done all of the stuff. We've gotten over many of the hurdles. And, you know, there's a good chance you haven't walked through the property since that initial time that you went through. Now, maybe you wanted to and we made a phone call and got the opportunity to walk back through and look at the house. That can certainly happen. But a lot of times you went through that initial time and you haven't been back through the house again now and we're coming up on closing. So you can do a final walkthrough. This isn't really the time necessarily that you're looking to back out because usually we're within 48 to 24 hours of closing. That would be a whole nother subject for another video, but it's just an opportunity to walk through the property and do a final walkthrough and make sure that you could put eyes on the things that were supposed to be done that they were done. And so we should have gotten letters back stating that those things were done at the time that it happened. There's invoices that we can see that get submitted, all that kind of stuff. So we have visibility of the process, making sure that any repairs we asked for were in fact completed. But this is your chance to walk through and actually take a look. So you can do that before closing. And also kind of in line with that, unless there was an early occupancy agreement made, then you're not gonna occupy the property until closing. So property conveys at closing. That's going to be the day that you're going to get the keys to the home and you're going to have ownership of the house so that you can actually occupy the home on closing day. And so with that kind of in the back of your mind, you know, feel free to, your realtor is being paid to represent you in this transaction. And so if you want to do things like a walkthrough, you know, after the due diligence period's over and perhaps there were some repairs made, and you want to just see the home because you're excited and you're buying it, you know, whatever the case may be, ask your realtor to see if that can be arranged and feel at liberty to ask questions. Like I said, the communication channel needs to go both ways. You need to find a realtor that you feel confident is going to communicate well with you, but you also need to feel confident that you can communicate with them to ask questions, to voice concerns and that kind of thing. Okay. Now this was a real high level view of what the transaction process looked like. And all this information, this is probably a half hour video, I think at this point after editing, it may feel like a lot, but my hope is that as we went through these things, even at a high level, each one of them made sense, okay? And so I'm hoping that you didn't come away from this video more overwhelmed by the prospect of buying a home. You came away a little bit more informed, you feel a little bit more educated about the process, and therefore you feel a little bit more at ease about it. I know it's a lot of information. There's a lot of, what they are are bullet points in the process. How do we start the process? Finding the house, putting an offer in on the house. What has to happen after we, you know, get an accepted offer, inspections, the loan, you know, closing, all these things, it's signing papers. It's a lot of bullet points, but when you really look at each one of them, each bullet point is very intuitive and it's very basic. They're, they're, none of it's really complicated and your realtor is there to walk with you and guide you through all of that so that you can be comfortable or as comfortable as possible when spending hundreds of thousands of dollars or more every step of the way, okay? So subscribe to the channel, that way you can stay notified because as I said, the plan is in future videos to take each one of these points and drill down into them. And we're gonna take a look at your contract, what it looks like point for point and drill down into each subject. We'll take a look at you know, the various parts of this process, but also we already have this playlist going where we're looking at the lending process. The plan is to really develop that out so that it can be as comprehensive as possible, knowing that a lot of the details of a loan are case by case. So there's some nuance to those things. Same thing with home inspections. We wanna to put together a playlist that will explain to you the process of a home inspection, 
wood inspections, these various things that we will go through in the future on the channel, and you will be notified if you're subscribed to the channel. So make sure that you do that. I hope that you found this informative. If there's anything that you would like to know or that you feel like was left out in this overview, please leave it in the comments and I'd be more than happy to go back and touch on anything. It's possible that I may have missed something that I should have mentioned. So if there's anything you're not clear about or you have a question about or you feel like was missed completely, please leave a comment and let us know. If you found this information helpful, please like the video. And as always, my information is down in the description. If you want to reach out to me and talk about anything real estate related or if you're looking to start the process of buying a home and you would like to see if working with me would be the right fit for you, then I'd love to chat with you today. Or if you're looking to sell your home and you would like a free home valuation and you would like to hear our marketing strategy of how we would put your home on the market and list it to get the highest value for it, then reach out to me. I'd love to talk with you today. And in the meantime, y'all take care and we'll see you soon.